Hi, I'm Belle. We are making roasted aubergine and coconut curry with spiced chickpeas over the top. This is a fantastically satiating plant-based curry. One of the reasons that we're using pulses is to bring in that extra protein content that we often miss with uh, plant-based dishes. So, as with any recipe, we need to get super organized. So hopefully you found your way to my website or the Hearst Festival website and you've printed yourself off the step-by-step -step guide that we're gonna talk through. Okay, so what we need to think about first is getting the oven on. Okay, so I popped my oven on to 180 Celsius. So whilst that's warming up, we're just gonna think about what we're gonna do with the chickpeas. Let's start with the chickpeas. The chickpeas are gonna be coated in a lovely smoky paprika, uh, slightly spicy and salty um, combination of flavors. They're gonna go over the top of the curry and they're gonna give it an extra bite, which is gonna be lovely alongside the softness of the aubergine. Okay, so what we need to think about first is getting our spices together with our oil, because that's what's gonna be coating the chickpeas. So I've got my utensils arranged here, lots of different spoons in there that we're gonna need as we go through. I'm taking a teaspoon and a small bowl. And what we need to be putting in is a teaspoon of each of these. So we've got a teaspoon of rapeseed oil. And then we've got our smoked paprika and we've got coriander and ground cumin. So I'm going to take a, another teaspoon, because the first one's oily, and I'm going to get my teaspoon of paprika, and then one of coriander, you can go a bit freestyle here with this, never much into weights and measures. There we go. So one smoked paprika, one coriander, and one of the ground cumin. And then we're going to blend those together. And you can smell those amazing Indian flavors coming through there. Okay, there's a lot of spice there, but, but that's good. Because what we're doing is we're coating a whole pan of chickpeas. I use these organic ones by Suma. I just rinse them out and put them into a colander, rinse them off, and then put them into a small bowl. So I've got my little bowl here, my bowl of chickpeas, and I need to coat these really evenly. So I'm gonna take them into a slightly larger bowl, and I'm gonna pop in my oily spice mix there. And then I'm just gonna give that a stir. I'm gonna really enjoy those gorgeous, spicy sensations that are coming through there. You really wanna coat them and make them very even. Now that's the spices and the oiliness is, is allowing those spices to really cling to the chickpeas. But what we also need is a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna grind some salt. I've got salt mixed with chili here. If you like a bit of extra spice, sea salt. So um, crystal's quite large because I like a bit of crunch. So some people are quite fond of salty foods. I like to use just a minimal amount, to give that a bit of bite. And then what I'm going to do once my oven is warmed is pop those onto a baking tray. They need to be very evenly dispersed. And then we're gonna pop them into the oven for, we go back to our guide, 25 minutes. Real blue Peter style here. I've got mine in the oven already. Okay, so they are in there, they are slowly cooking. It's not too high a heat. But what we need to remember is halfway through that 25 minute cooking time, we really need to take them out, get our spatula and really move them around because what we're looking for is crunch. We need them to be drying out evenly because they're gonna give that lovely, nice crunchiness on top of the curry at the end. If we don't move them around, they'll only be kind of half crunchy. So we need to remember that in about 10 minutes time. Okay. Step one is done. How about step two? Step two, step three we're moving on to now. We're gonna sort out the aubergine wedges. Okay, so we've got our aubergine. 
This is about the uh, right size you need for the quantity you've got here, 300 grams. So you're looking for kind of a medium to large aubergine there. Now aubergines are fantastic in a plant-based diet. They're full of certain phytochemicals that give us lots of fantastic health benefits. They're also very high in fiber, but low in fat. And that's what plant-based diet's all about. It's about making the majority of your foods full of nutrients, full of health boosting uh, carbohydrates and fiber, adding the protein in with the chickpeas, and it leads to a very satiating filling um, food plan without having to add lots of saturated fats. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is take our knife, and then we're gonna chop the head off, chop off the tail, and then we're gonna cut it into segments like this, about one centimeter thick, and then we are dividing them into quarters. So that gives us a nice surface area to absorb the olive oil that we're gonna put in there. Okay. So cutting those up, dividing them into quarters. And then once they are divided, we're gonna put those in a roasting pan along with two tablespoons of olive oil. So I've got my tablespoon nice and handy by the hole. And I've got my two tablespoons of olive oil there. And then you also want to season them well with salt and pepper. So good old grind of salt there. And lashings of pepper. Toss them around. Now what you're going to be doing is spreading them evenly onto a baking sheet or a large roasting tin. They'll cook much better like that. So they need to be really not touching and halfway through the cooking time, again, we're going to remember to toss them over in the oil because what we're looking for by baking them is that lovely, slightly squidgy, caramelized flavors where the natural sugar of these plant-based foods comes out and, and allows a lot of tenderness and a lot more flavor. So once you've got those nicely onto your roasting tin, we're gonna pop those into the oven there. Okay, along with the chickpeas. Right, so the chickpeas are cooking for about another 20 minutes, which is perfect timing because the aubergines need about 20 minutes too. Now, in the meantime, what we can do is get organized with the other part of the dish. So we've got our non-stick pan here with a fitted lid. And what we need to start thinking about is chopping up the onion and the garlic and getting the spices in there. So that's nicely sauteing whilst our chickpeas and our aubergines are cooking. And this is all gonna come together at the same time, we hope. Right, so let's go back to our step-by-step -step guide. We are now heating the remainder of the oil in the pan. So we're putting in another tablespoon of oil and we're putting our, our pan onto a low to medium heat. Don't want it to be too high. We don't want to damage those oils as we're cooking. So putting that onto a low heat and then we'll just turn it up as we go. Okay, now just to distribute that oil evenly, I've got my little oil brush here, and just moving that oil around the pan. Fantastic. And that's just very gently heating up. Now what we need to be doing is taking our onion and slicing it up into very small little cubes. Okay, so I've got my red onion here, just slicing that up. Alongside my garlic, always like to use lots of garlic in a dish. Okay, I've got that, and I'm going to turn the 
heat just slightly up now so, it's done, so I can hear it sizzling. Okay, chopped up the onion there. Give that a little stir around, just want that to start softening. So if you think about how much garlic we're going to put in. Okay, I've suggested two cloves here. I will leave that with you. Some people like garlic and some people don't. But two cloves, um, you won't taste it too much, but it does definitely add to the dish. You can always pop a little bit more in if you want to. Now, I can already smell the onion and the garlic starting to heat up there, it smells fantastic. So whilst that's just start, starting to simmer, we can think about our spices. So the spices that we're gonna use here, and we need a clean teaspoon to get our spices into the pan. We need garam masala. Oh, I love the smell of garam masala that is. That just takes me back to sitting in fantastic um, tali houses in India, waiting for my food to arrive, wondering what it's going to be. Okay, this is turmeric. Now, you might have heard about turmeric. Turmeric has lots of incredible health-giving properties. It's known to be an anti-inflammatory, amongst other things. So, also um, an antioxidant, so thinking about immune boosting alongside garlic, turmeric and garlic are fantastic when you go hand in hand there. Okay, and then we are going to take some coriander. Again, another half teaspoon of coriander. Pop that in there. Oh, that smells good. Spices are really starting to Fill the kitchen, gorgeous aroma. Okay, now I always like to stick a splash of water in. So I've got my kettle handy here. Just a little splash of water there. So we're actually steam cooking and not needing the uh, temperature to get too high so we don't want to be damaging the oil. Okay, so back to our grind there. So it's a few minutes until, so pop the lid on. I can see it's steaming there and I can smell it, it's amazing. Now because you've got the lid on and that's retaining the heat, what we can do is just turn that down a little bit. I can see underneath the lid that all the steam's coming up and allowing the um, onion and the garlic to become more translucent, that's what we're looking for. Okay, now whilst that's allowing um, some time just to saute away there, we need to give it a few moments. Let's just think about what we're gonna add next. We have got a tin of chopped tomatoes here, which I've got open and at the ready, so we're gonna use half of those. And then we have some coconut milk, which I've opened here, so I'm just ready to pour it in. Again, we're going to use half of this tin. So we're gonna use 200 milliliters. You're welcome to measure it out to a measuring jug. I'm more of a free pour, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna judge it by how much I got in the tin. A little bit extra, a little bit less where I'm at this dish. Okay, now, whilst we're waiting for this, what I'm gonna do is have a look at the chickpeas and see what's happening. So it's so important to make sure that they are crunching up evenly. And they are, can you hear that? I'm just, I'm just rocking them around like this. There we go, so. I know that they're gonna be evenly coated in oil, evenly coated in the spices, and also um, their, whole, their whole surface area will be exposed to the heat. So they're gonna go nice and crunchy all over. I'm also just looking in my oven now, and I'm checking my aubergines, and I'm giving them a little, just push them around a little bit to make sure that they are evenly coated in their oils too. And then we're going to close that back up. So important to do that. Okay, now whilst we're waiting, what we can think about as well is how we're going to serve our dish. So as you can see here, I've got this gorgeous um, 
flatbread, which is a gluten-free sweet potato flatbread. I haven't made it, I, mean, I could make it, but I've actually bought it and they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and also I've made a little salad to go alongside. This works perfectly with rice, absolutely perfectly. However, if you want to reduce your carbs a little bit, and what I mean by carbs is the kind of rice, pasta, heavy bread carbs, and have a more plant-based diet, sometimes it's good to think about um, having like a really thin flatbread and a little salad, a really fresh salad on the side. So what I've done there is I have just grated some carrot, grated some coriander, stuff I've got in the garden. I've also got some basil out there. I've also got mint and I'm just making this really nice um, crunchy little salad to go on the side. I think that's a really good uh, accompaniment. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that there. Something else I've got in my little dish uh, that I've been growing in the garden is fresh coriander, but I've got fresh coriander seeds. You might notice if you're growing coriander, sometimes the plant bolts and um, the coriander leaves aren't as, as you would see them if you bought them in a bag in a shop like this. Mm. I've got a bag of coriander here. So I've got these little leaves um, and when the plant bolts, actually the leaves just kind of go off into a less coriander, a less tasty, a less recognisable taste, and they go um, a little bit bitter. However, what they do have is these fantastic coriander seeds. So I'm going to take some of those. You might have some in your spice cupboard, but it's just a nice tip because when they're growing fresh, they're really, really punchy. So what I've been doing is every time I make a curry, I just go out into the greenhouse and take a few of these seeds, take them off, and I'm now going to add them to my onion and garlic and spices. I've got a little bit of mint in here too that I'm gonna add as a garnish right at the end, my sprig of mint. Okay, so with a wooden spoon, I'm just gonna move that around. That's the onion and all the spices and those coriander seeds. Then I'm gonna crush my garlic in there. extra garlic, a little bit extra garlic right at the end, let's do that. Now, I'm a big fan of fresh chilies. So I've got this big long chili here and I'm just gonna use a little bit of it. And I'm gonna save a little bit as well to put on the salad, on the salad as a little garnish at the end. So, just chopping that. There we go. I'm gonna pop that in there. Not too much. It's just going to really pick up the flavours when I put the aubergine in there. Okay, so as you can see on your step-by-step -step guide, the onion needs to be cooked for about five or six minutes. And I can see now, turn the heat up just a little bit, that that's going nice and translucent. It's nice and yellow. I can see I've put a really good amount of turmeric in there. I um, always like to add a bit of extra turmeric because of its health-giving properties. Right, okay, so we're waiting for the spices to fill the kitchen and they really are filling the kitchen now. So it's time to tip in the tomatoes and the coconut milk. Right, so here's my coconut milk. Just taking a spoon here and I'm gonna pour that in. Oh, it's just lovely and creamy. Now, because I've just poured it, that in and, and the coconut milk's obviously cold, I'm just notching up the heat a little bit. I want to get it back to how it was when that onion was sizzling away. So I'm just mixing that around. Taking the chopped tomatoes, popping those in there too. Might want to wear an apron, just in case you get splattered with tomato. I'm just mixing that around. Okay, that's turning into a just gorgeous, pink, beautifully, wonderfully smelling mixture there. So good. Now, whilst that is just heating up a little bit more, I can see by looking at my timer that we're coming up to that sort of 
15 to 20 minute marker. So I want to make sure that my chickpeas aren't overdoing. Because uh, what we're looking for, that's absolutely perfect. We're looking for uh, chickpeas that's a bit hot at the moment, but it'd be nice to try one in a moment. We want it to sound like that. They're not soft anymore. They've gone nice and crunchy, but they're not burnt and they're full of flavor. It's very easy if you just leave it a couple of minutes to kind of go over the borderline into uh, chickpeas that are looking a bit black, blackened. We don't want blackened in any way. We just want them. Some of them have opened up actually. I'm gonna try one in a moment when they cool down a little bit. And they should be nice and crunchy. And as you bite into them, you should get the spices should be released in your mouth. And also the salt, you should be able to taste just a little bit of salt without it being over, overpowering. Shouldn't taste like the saltiness of a pack of crisps, but you should be able to get that bite. Okay, so I'm also, as my coconut milk and uh, tomato mix is simmering away there nicely, I'm just gonna check my aubergines. Okay, these are looking really good. So, I'm just going to pop them over here. Great. Okay, so what they should be looking like is, just get these, I'll show you. We want them to be looked to, they should be going squidgy, okay? So they're small and squidgy now. They're not blackened. They're just lovely and browned, okay. The oven's still hot, I'm turning my oven off now, but I'm popping those back in because they need another five minutes. On the top shelf, chickpeas are out, they're just cooling, but the aubergines definitely need another five minutes. Now this little mix is just bubbling away, absolutely beautiful. Okay, that needs to be simmering for around 10 minutes. You can see how all of the uh, different components are combining and this is becoming a really lovely sauce. Now, it's time to add the coriander in there. Okay, so what we're looking for is half a bag of coriander. So this size bag, this is 25 grams. You might want to use your own coriander if you're growing it, um, then fantastic. What I'm doing is taking half of it out. I find the best way to chop coriander is to use some kitchen scissors. Yeah, so I've just got my kitchen scissors there and I'm chopping it. So I would call that finely to very, very small amounts, just half of this, so a quarter of a whole bag because you're going to use the rest to scatter over the top at the end. And again, you can use the, your kitchen scissors to do the scattering. It's just great to use these scissors because we're just saving the chopping time on the board over there, getting it straight in there. Much, much easier. Okay, so, stirring that around. Oh, the sauce is starting to look like one of those really gorgeous curry sauces that you get when you eat out. And actually it makes you realise that it's very, very easy to make these sauces. So, so easy. You know, we, we buy them in jars and they're full of different stabilisers that are keeping them on the shelves for two and a half years. And, and just cooking this in, you know, 30 minutes makes you realise it's really easy. You need some very simple ingredients and a little bit of know-how, and then you're, you know, you're eliminating all of those nasty synthetic chemicals that are popped into jars in order to lengthen their shelf life. Okay, that is bubbling up. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells great. Okay, now my chickpeas have cooled. Some of them have burst apart a little bit. Mmm, they're good. Crunchy, not burnt, a little bit spicy. Very important to try them. I don't think it's enough salt. So, mm, I wanted to bite into a bit of crunchy sea salt there, I didn't, so 
either that was the only chickpea that got away with that or they need a bit more salt. So I'm going for option B and I'm gonna stick a bit more on that. Okay. So the sauce is now thickening. We want it to thicken. It can go on a really low heat. Low heat. Lid on. Now it's time to take out the aubergine and we're gonna pop it in with that lovely coconut sauce. Okay, so I've got my spatula at the ready. Take the lid off. And I'm just popping all of that aubergine into the sauce and I'm gonna coat it, mix it all together. It's gonna to be amazing. Okay, great. That is great. And the colour combinations are just incredible. Right, just keep that out of the way. I'm going to pop that back in there. Okay, now it's time to give this an extra stir. So now I'm coating the aubergine in this really, really gorgeous sauce. And I want a little bit of understanding of how this sauce tastes before I serve it up to my diners. I think it's really important to taste it at least a couple of times as you go through. Oh wow, that's really good. I've got the onion and the garlic and all the spices and the coriander, that fresh coriander really comes through. Again, missing a little bit of salt needs a bit more bite. So, a bit more salt in there. If you're using teaspoons, I'd say that's minimal. Not even quarter of a teaspoon, just a tiny bit. But just keep, just keep trying it until you like it. Everyone has a different palate when it comes to seasonings. Okay, so that's gonna, just cook away there. I'm going to put the lid on because it needs a few minutes for the aubergine to really take on the flavours. Now whilst that is bubbling away there, I've got a spring onion here and I think that a spring onion as a garnish alongside the coriander and that little crunchy salad will be amazing. So I'm just going to slice that up. Just one. Just one, because this is all we need. And really, this is as much about texture and crunch as it is about flavour. I've got my little pot of mint here, so as soon as this is chopped, I'm going to add it to the dish of mint, so that as soon as I serve this up, I can sprinkle on the garnish and it's ready to be eaten. there. Starting to look like a really nice little um, dish of garnishes and a tiny bit of chilli. For people who like chilli on a curry, I like to have a bit of chilli on the side because generally when you're cooking for more than two people, now this is dish quantity wise, portion wise is designed for two people. If you're cooking it for more, if you're doubling up, it's quite likely you're gonna have a few people who absolutely love chili and then others who don't like it at all. So the way I get around that is to cook quite a mild chili and then on the side I've got this little garnish that if they sprinkle on can really spice things up a little bit or they can just leave it out. So it just suits everybody. Never a big fan of cooking twice or cooking multiple dishes for people's different tastes and foodie requirements. I like to have one meal and then I'll do little dishes around the side to make that work for everybody. Oh wow, this is looking great. Okay. Again, I want to try this just to make sure that that little um, added bit of salt and pepper I put in there is, is really picked up flavors. If not, I'm gonna add some more. Mm. 
yes, good. Just need a bit of extra salt and a few chillies. I'm putting a few chillies in now. Great, that's amazing. Really, really good. We're ready to serve. So, got my dish here with the flatbread and a little salad there. And I'm turning off the heat. Got a big spoon at the ready. Spooning that on, such a nice visual. Thinking of all the colours we've got there. At the end, you could also add a really big dollop of uh, Greek yogurt, plain yogurt would be amazing. Particularly because of the, the colour contrast. You know, sticking out on Instagram, it's quite nice. Black aubergine against white does look pretty amazing. Um, if you like to actually eat rather than take photographs of things, then of course it doesn't matter so much. But the mildness of the yogurt is really fantastic alongside the spiciness of this dish. So, got my aubergine curry there, and then I'm just taking some of these chickpeas. I'm just using my hand here. It's food for me, so it's fine. Oh, wow. And that is just gorgeous. We're going to pop our little garnish on the side. Wow, this looks great. I'm excited about eating it. Just gonna move that over and then you can see what an absolutely beautiful dish that is. And the smell of coconut spices is just absolutely incredible. So, I hope you enjoy this dish. It's extremely satiating. I hope it will suit lots of different palettes and also allow us to, to understand how to make a really basic Indian um, cooking sauce without having to buy them at all. We can just make them all ourselves. Okay, happy eating.